our Just Cause 4 Spotlight series, where today we'll be taking a look into the new and improved Supply Drop function. Supply Drops, the successor to Just Cause 3's Rebel Drop, allows you to select exactly the vehicle, weapon, or even some cool random items that you want and fly them in via the menu. How's that for same day delivery? With a whopping total of 104 vehicles, as well as new exotic types that have various functions, transporting yourself around the world has never been more fun. Seriously, just look how many vehicles there are, and this isn't even all of them. It's insane! Or if combat is more your cup of tea, the various weapons, including the iconic wind gun, are available too. How does a supply drop work? First things first, you're going to need access to these various items in order to drop them, and you can unlock these by completing various game content, operations, quests, performing car or bike stunt rings, or advancing your army of chaos frontline by liberating regions. Cool, so we've completed this objective which has popped up with a message here to say that the item reward has been added to the supply drop. Let's go ahead and fly it in. Another new feature is being able to precisely angle your drop using the ghost container, rather than just throwing a beacon and hoping for the best like in Just Cause 3. This is perfect for setting up intricate stunts, dropping a boat into a river, or angling a car away from enemies for an escape. Introducing the pilots. There's a total of seven pilots that Rico can unlock as you progress in achieving chaos milestones. Fortuna and Bulldog are available immediately. Aragon unlocks at milestone four, Bailarina at six, Brujo nine, Yumo 11, and finally Fiera at milestone 14. The more pilots you have, the more frequently you can supply drop items. So it's definitely worth causing chaos. Loadouts. Each pilot has a loadout function similar to the grapple hook, so you can assign certain items to each one. Then, simply quick drop those items in, without having to go back and select them from the menu again. You'll likely start to accumulate certain favourite cars or planes as you play. For example, if Bulldog is our sports car guy, we can assign this vehicle to him, and that's all he will drop. And if we only want Fortuna to drop barrels, she's on it. The quick drop feature speeds up the process immensely and prevents you having to hunt through the many different available items to find your favourites. Let's check out the supply drop in a range of different scenarios. It might be time to make a quick getaway here. Let's supply drop in one of the sports vehicles. In Just Cause 4, the vehicle handling has been majorly overhauled. There's also multiple camera angles and even the addition of a radio, so you can jam along to some authentic South American tunes while speeding through Solis. I'm thinking that conventional weapons aren't quite Just Cause 4 enough in this situation. Let's take out these guys with a giant head instead. Thanks for watching our spotlight on supply drops. What vehicle, weapon or sandbox toy do you think you'll be flying in the most? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be told when we upload. And we'll see you in another Just Cause 4 video. Bye bye for now. Welcome to Spotlight. This is a video series where we take a closer look into a different aspect of Just Cause 4. If you're looking for fresh information and sneak peeks on gameplay, you have come to the right place. For our first episode, we're focusing on the rich, bustling world of Solis and the gargantuan biomes, intricate sub-biomes, and of course, extreme weather. It's time to take a tour of the huge world that you'll be exploring as of December 4th. The world of Solis. Taking inspiration from South America, Solis is the most diverse and memorable landscape that Just Cause has ever had. 
there's a vast array of unique landmarks that you can discover and explore. It is incredibly tempting to take a buggy ride through the dusty desert at sunset, or hike up a humid hill in the rainforest and simply get lost in the gorgeous atmosphere. Avalanche Studios have really gone back to the roots of Just Cause, and now has a map that will excite your curiosity no matter where you look. This rich South American inspired setting introduces four distinct biomes comprising of rainforest, grasslands, desert and alpine. How do these different biomes alter the way you play? These biomes have various vertical opportunities. Plateaus, mountains and canyons mix up the terrain. They also need to cater to places where it's fun to drive and use the new vehicles. From rolling hills to sand dunes to a brand new interstate with no speed limits. So, let's explore each biome. Heavily inspired by the Andes, the alpine biome is harsh and hostile. If you're trying to beat that personal best for the longest continuous wingsuit run, the alpine is the place to trial it. The feeling of flying through a freezing valley and being totally encapsulated by towering mountains is an unrivaled sensation and a distinctly different experience from any other part of the world. The twisting roads make for an interesting journey by car, but you've got to give the snowmobile a go and smash through the snowy plains. There's even a unique train journey that chugs along the rail tracks. Why not hop aboard? This extreme weather in the Alpine region comes in the form of roaring blizzards. Fierce winds and stripped visibility makes for one mean weather type. Here we are in the tropical, humid lands of the rainforest. It's massive and is actually the largest of all the regions in Just Cause 4. With various layers to its canopy, this will alter the way you move around the biome. The thick pockets of forest means wingsuiting through the midsection will be difficult. So instead of flying low, stretch up high above the canopy for a more open, easier way to travel. The boundless trees are a great option to use when grappling onto and initially lifting yourself up into the sky. The extreme weather type that roams the rainforest biome are the tropical storms. These storms are daunting, green-tinged pockets of destruction, with fault lightning that will strike the highest point in the sky. Now we're taking a trip to the calm, serene climate of the grasslands. This biome takes its inspiration from the Pampas in Argentina, but has been injected with true just cause verticality and is mostly developed towards agriculture with stretches of corn, wheat and other grains. This is the most populated part of Solis, with everything from vast cities and towering skyscrapers to bustling farmlands and fields. Driving the buggy or the ATV over these hills is insanely fun. Even sticking to the roads is a blast with the interstate, where you can race in supercars thanks to no speed limit. And I hope you're ready to take tons of screenshots, because the vistas from the highlands of the rest of Solis are truly some of the most stunning views in the entire game. You could argue that the extreme weather in the grasslands needs no introduction. One word. Tornadoes. The devastating, swirling vortex lives in the valleys and will consume, destroy and rip up anything in its path. Once lush grasslands have since dried out and have turned into a hostile and dry wilderness. The smallest of all the biomes, it is a mixture between areas of smooth sand dunes and rougher, rockier bands. It almost looks like an alien planet, a whole new world. 
the wide open spaces, few roads and drifting sand dunes are perfect for a cross-country buggy ride across the desert. Of course, this being just cause 4, you can attach some boosters on the back for rocket fast transportation. In the desert, we don't need roads, you make your own path. <laughs> the open desert is also an air vehicle playground, so feel free to use helicopters and planes wherever you want. As all the biomes, the desert is also a great example of finding curiosities in all directions. It begs the question, where do I go next? The answer is entirely up to you. This extreme weather type affects visibility massively. It's very hard to see who you're fighting, where you're driving, and what you're doing. The Black Hand Rico's deadly opponents and biggest challenge so far. They are the Solis Private Militia, headed up by the ruthless Gabriella. Let's hop into this spotlight on the Black Hand and explore more about the world's most advanced army. Gabriella, soldier, protector, leader. Gabriella's ambition, persistence, and deadly talent have all converged to forge the perfect Black Hand operative. You are just like me. The Black Hand is Gabriella's home and her life, and she'll do everything that she can to protect it. Ghost. Meet the ghost. Oh, wait, where'd he go? As you can see, or rather not see, the ghost enemy type has a cloaking ability that renders him almost entirely invisible. You can see how that's a bit of a pickle in combat. How do you kill him if you can't see him? There is, however, a vague rippling effect where the ghost is, so you can still make out where he is if you focus. Be quick, though. Whilst camouflaged, they will charge up a powerful shot and attempt to shoot you before they turn visible again. The ghost is incredibly agile. They'll dart around, slide into cover, roll and evade, so that it's much trickier to pin them down and land a successful shot. His purpose is to flush you out and force you to keep moving. And he does it well. Sniper. Utilizing laser sight, the sniper has pinpoint accuracy and can cause significant damage to Rico from far away. You'll instantly know when snipers are targeting Rico because a red laser will follow him around relentlessly. Tactically, if you whip into your wingsuit, they will have a much harder time tracking your movements. Titan. Titan by name, Titan by nature. Titans do not have weak points and can take a lot of damage thanks to their incredibly resilient armor. I fired three consecutive rockets right at him and he still gets right back up. The main weapon of choice for a Titan is the railgun. They will track and target Rico with a blue laser sight, charge up a shot and then launch a high velocity projectile at him, completely blasting him backwards and crunching Rico's health. If your escape plan is to evade into the skies with your trusty parachute and wingsuit, think again. Titans can aim incredibly well, and their success rate with knocking Rico out of the sky with a blast from their railgun is more likely than not. Additionally, they have the ability to charge up a much more powerful red shot that will leave you teetering on the edge of life and death. If they manage to blast you into the path of enemies, you're a goner. If all that wasn't enough to deal with, when initializing combat, the Titan can also launch a protective drone. Talk about a double threat. Grenadier. Operating in the range between privates and snipers, the Grenadier will fire a grenade launcher multiple times towards you. The grenades don't explode upon impact, but have a couple of seconds delay before the blast allowing for a little bit of time for you to escape before you feel the wrath of the grenades. He's also covered for when you get near him, as he'll switch to a submachine gun for close range combat. Finally, if and when you do manage to take the Grenadier down, for one last chance at taking you out, they'll drop multiple grenades that explode at once. Even after death, they're still coming for you. 
super elite. This scary looking dude is immune to all bullet damage and has high defense against explosions, making the super elite an enemy that requires full focus and quite some time to defeat. Thinking of using your grappling hook to latch some boosters and blow him away? Well, think again. Super elites are also exempt from grappling hook attacks. Told you he's scary. Riot Shielder The Shielder is a predominantly defensive enemy that carries a large riot shield and is equipped with an SMG. Entirely unique to just cause, this foe can raise a shield in all angles rather than only being able to block straight on. They do this to deliberately block wherever Rico is. For example, they'll lift it above their heads when Rico is airborne. Think of them like a tortoise, hiding in their shell. Well, a tortoise that can also shoot at you quite a lot. RPG Unit The RPG Unit was also in Just Cause 3 and has had improvements to make his behavior more coherent in Just Cause 4. This enemy targets Rico with a green laser to differentiate from the red snipers. You can also telegraph his position after he's fired a rocket as a smoke trail lingers behind from his location to yours. Even if the rocket itself doesn't hit you, the explosion makes a large damage radius. So whenever you see that green laser, try to grapple or wingsuit out of its path real quickly. Machine Gunner as we've seen in previous trailers, the secondary fire on this weapon allows him to deploy a stationary shield, crouching to cover behind it. This transforms him into a small target with high damage output. And even if you manage to get up close, he'll reposition himself so that it's difficult for you to gain an opening. Private These are the most common enemy, and you'll find them pretty much everywhere and anywhere in the world of Solis. Visually, they are without heavy armor and instead wear standard combat fatigues uniform. Expanding on Just Cause 3, these guys work with a much more professional style, tactical movement, and use of cover. Privates are usually taking the wheel when escorting around their fellow soldiers, and they won't think twice about running Rico over, so watch out for when they're driving. Although privates are relatively easy to dispatch of, be careful not to get swarmed by too many. Elite The privates also have an evolution, the elite soldier. Elites will do more damage with better weapons and have higher health due to being kitted out in thick armor. They use a range of weapons and walk around like they own the place. We've seen the elite soldier countless times in numerous trailers before and you'll be sure to see much more of them in the game.